Good evening, students. Today we come to learn about the red eye syndrome. It's very common in eye practice and even in non eye practice to find people either in the hospital in our communities or society who have red eyes. So the purpose of this particular lecture is not for you to be comprehensively informed about the etiology of red eye, but at least to be equipped with the most common causes of red eye syndrome so that once you detect one in your practice, it becomes easier to have a checklist on your mind and think about the possible cause of a red eye. So, for example, conjunctivitis is quite common and it just means inflammation of the conjunctiva. Okay, with conjunctivitis, clients may have discharge. Okay, look at some discharge here on the upper eyelash. Okay, so whether it's viral, bacteria, or any type, you realize that conjunctivitis comes with red eye. So that's one of the most common causes of what? Red eye syndrome. Have you seen conjunctivitis here? And the evidence is that there's discharge that has really happened at the level. We have some discharge on the upper eyelashes, okay? Another common cause of red eye syndrome, we call it what? Subconjunctiva hemorrhage. It may be localized or sometimes diffused within the subconjunctiva region of the eyeball. In this particular instance, it is found at one particular section here. Okay? It's so red. It's remarkably red because it's fresh blood. And we call it what subconjunctiva hemorrhage is also a common cause of red eye syndrome let's look at another cause this is known as episcleritis look at how the vessels the episcleral vessels are engorged okay they have increased in size and become tortuous it's a common cause of what red eye syndrome so it is the episclera that is what inflamed and this is accompanied with engorgement or increase in size and tortuosity of the episclera vessels as you can see in this particular picture but there's also another cause of red eye syndrome known as what scleritis scleritis which is equally fraught with engorged vessels but these vessels are coming from the sclera okay for you to differentiate between episcleritis and scleritis theoretically in scleritis it is a sclera which is inflamed and once it is inflamed these vessels are what engorged they become bigger than usual and become so prominent because there's inflammation there whereas in episcleritis, the engorgement and tortuosity of the vessels happen at the level of the episclera region of the eyeball. One major difference, if you are not able to differentiate between the episclera and the sclera, the major thing you need to do is to try and move the conjunctiva. Move the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva will move with the episclera. So, if it is episcleritis, once you move the conjunctiva, which is on top of the episclera, 
you see the vessel around that area moving together with the movement of the conjunctiva when it is episcleritis. However, if it is scleritis, once you move the conjunctiva, then gold blood vessels will stay at the same area where they are found. They will not move. So in episcleritis, the engorged or tortuous vessels will move together with the movement of the conjunctiva. Whereas in scleritis, when you move the conjunctiva, which is on top of the reddened area, of the vessels that are within the sclera, simply because movement of the conjunctiva moves with the episclera, but movement of the conjunctiva does not move to the sclera. Here's another picture which shows scleritis. This is quite diffuse. Almost all over the anterior portion of the sclera is what? Inflamed. But in this other one, it is just one sector. Okay? Remember that there are so many types of classification when it comes to all these uh, entities. So let's go to another one. We call it what? Uveitis. Uveitis. There's something you should know that the middle concentric layer of the eyeball is the uvea and that if it's the anterior part of the uvea which is inflamed we call it anterior uveitis anterior uveitis what are the clinical features the client will have reddened eye which is start being circumciliary in other words it's around the limbus perilimbar region okay but when the disease progresses the redness may become generalized that's number one number two they develop what you call keratic precipitates look critically at where my arrows are found where these arrows are found okay there are some opaque brownish lesions on the cornea endothelium we call it what keratic precipitates so keratic precipitates there's a conciliary injection of course, sometimes you have cells and flare in the anterior chamber of the eyeball. All right, so cells flare in the anterior chamber, keratic precipitate, and then circumciliary injection. This is known as what anterior uveitis, one of the most common causes of red eye syndrome. Then we have another common cause, which is what acute angle closure glaucoma okay look at it critically there are few findings that you call your attention here one the cornea is edematous it's not as transparent as the other cornea that you are used to seeing so there's cornea edema all right and if you examine under the microscope you realize that the anterior chamber death becomes a bit shallow and look at the size of the people Okay, it's made dilated. The people is made dilated. And because of the cornea edema, of course, when you check the pressure in the eye, it's quite high. Okay, and of course, the eye is red. So some of the patients will come in telling you that they have half-sided headaches in addition to severe ocular pain. In fact, some patients go on to say they have had vomiting. So, acute angle closure glaucoma is quite severe and it causes what? Red eye syndrome. Then, another cause of red eye syndrome, which is common, is what? Cornea ulcer. Cornea ulcer. Look at the normal cornea at this area, but there's an ulcer around this portion of the cornea. So, that is the cornea ulcer. And associated with this cornea ulcer is what? Hypopion. Is pass in the anterior chamber. This is known as what? Hypopion. And this has caused what? Redness of the eye, which we call red eye syndrome. So cornea ulcer. Look at the ulcer here. Okay. And it's associated. It's not all cornea ulcers that have hypopion, but this one has hypopion. So let's take advantage and know that hypopion is pass within the anterior chamber of the eyeball and it is associated with some forms of cornea ulcer 
and remember that the purpose of this slide is for you to know that cornea ulcers are major causes of red eye syndrome again look at another cause of red eye syndrome okay is what high femur high femur do you see it that is blood within the anterior chamber of the eyeball okay high femur it has caused what red eye of course the cornea doesn't look quite clear and you have some particles of red blood cells floating within the anterior chamber but the truth of the matter is that there's high femur which has caused red eye syndrome remember and have a critical look at the fact that there are sutures here okay these are ocular sutures all right so most likely the patient had a surgical procedure after which he or she had high femur or probably there was an anterior chamber washout but the truth and underlying reason for which we brought this slide is that there is what high femur which has caused red eye okay for your information and but it's not part of the lecture look at the whitish eyelashes here known as what poliosis okay anyway then another cause which is not very common but of course it's good that we know is carotid cavernous fistula okay causing red eye syndrome look at how encroached the episcleral veins have become okay so carotid cavernous fistula may happen as a result of trauma to the head trauma to the eyes can happen as a result of hypertension diabetes hypercholesterolemia but many patients who get carotid cavernous fistula have proptosis and pulsation within this proptose eye and of course red eye manifested by engorged episclera veins highly engorged okay and if you listen to the person's carotids you may hear a brewing when you check the intraocular pressure with contact tonometry you will feel pulsations okay from the eye to the globe and onto the aplanation tonometer so what happens here the high velocity flow of blood from the internal carotids okay now because there's a joint between the internal carotid and a vein, a vein which may happen at the cavernous sinus all right it causes what position from the high flow blood within the carotid and within the cavernous sinus we also know that the third the fourth and the sixth cranial nerve also pass there so some patients will come with what globe which is not able to move in any direction what we call ophthalmoplegia okay so that is a carotid cavernous fistula causing red eye syndrome the last but not the least on my slide is orbital lymphoma all right so salmon patch hemorrhage is here and this is typical for what orbital lymphoma remember that there's a tall list of diseases entities capable of causing red eye syndrome what i just did is just to mention some of the most common causes which you should be equipped with and so students at the juncture bring my lecture to to an end and remember that red eye syndrome is quite common whether in eye practice or in non-eye practice so red eye syndrome can be caused by conjunctivitis all types of conjunctivitis subconjunctiva hemorrhage okay as you find here episcleritis scleritis this is another form of scleritis can be caused by anterior uveitis acute angle closure glaucoma 
right Konya also okay it can be caused by her femur it can be caused by carotid cavernous fistula it can be caused by orbital lymphoma students at this juncture bring my lecture to an end learn the slides and uh, put down a few questions and that you may have difficulties clarifying and then when we meet in class i'm going to make sure i throw more light on them for better understanding until i meet you again continue learning hard